Hi, my name is George Pearson and this special Photoshop Elements video is part of a series that I have on doing photography techniques for wedding photography. You can see a few examples in here from the different videos. Now all of these are using images that are available free on the internet and I have a link in the description for you to download the videos if you want to work with the same images that I'm using in my video demonstrations. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this Photoshop Elements wedding photography project, we're going to be giving this picture a duotone look, and what we'll be doing actually is going to be a cyanotone look, which is giving it a cyan cast. Notice that we have removed all other colors and just left in just the cyan. I've also put in a bit of a vignetting around the outside, darkening on the corners to give it more of an old-fashioned look. So let's go through the process. I'll show you the fast way to do this and then a second way with a little more control. Add a few more steps onto it. Okay, we'll start off by taking the background and dragging it up to the new background layer. Right there, there we go. So we have a new copy in here. And let's hide that background. There it is. Okay, the first thing we want to do, our fast technique, is just to convert this to a cyan look. And that part of it is easy to do. Go up here to Enhance, come down to Adjust Color, and then Adjust Hue Saturation right there. Click on that one. There we go. Here's our Hue Saturation dialog box. And the whole trick is right there, that little thing that says Colorize. Click on that. And that removes all the color except for just the one tone. You can control what color this is by dragging this slider control over here to the right hand side. Notice as I move it across we get different color values in here. You can also type in a color right there if you want to and I'll be using 215 which is a pretty good cyan tone. You can adjust the saturation, how much color is in there. There's a whole lot of color. For instance there's no color. So you can adjust the saturation to suit to get just the look that you want and of course we also can make it lighter or darker. So just play around with those until it gets just the look that you want. I'm going to keep the lightness at zero, no change on that. And there's that basic look. That's, that's the basic technique in here. Geez, okay. And there it is. There's our basic cyanotone. Now let's see how we can take this just a little bit further to have a little more control over doing this. So this is the easy way. The next way is still relatively easy, but there's a few more steps and it gives you much more control over the outcome. So take the background layer again, drag it up to the new layer button. There we go, making a new copy. Let me hide the background. This time, we're going to convert this to black and white first, and then colorize it after the conversion. We'll then put on that vignetting around the corners. Okay, so go up here to Enhance. Convert to black and white brings up the Convert to black and white dialog box. The nice thing about this is that we can use this to control how the conversion looks. What I recommend doing is going through and looking at these different styles first, see what it looks like, and pick the one that has the best look for your picture. Now, we'll be making some small adjustments afterwards. Looks like urban snapshots or portraits. And they're pretty close. So portraits all right. So there's a go. There, there is the conversion to black and white. We can come down here and we can now adjust our contrast. You can go more contrasty or less contrasty. It's up to you. I think somewhere in here looks pretty good. That's a plus two, as you can see there. You can adjust the blues, greens, and reds to control how their colors shift. There, there's taking the blues out, bringing blues up. I think someplace right around in here looks pretty good. I'm just kind of visually comparing back and forth. A little more green, a little too much, a little less green maybe, just a touch. A little more red, possibly. I think somewhere around in here looks pretty good. Let me just hover over this for a second. So that's at a plus 33 on the red and a plus 31 on the green, plus 35 on the blue. Now, the numbers you choose here will 
be different depending upon what your picture looks like. It's going to depend upon what colors are in your original picture, how you need to shift these down here. But as you can see, it allows us to fine tune that conversion to black and white and make it look as nice as possible. When you're happy with that, choose OK. So there's a nice black and white. Now, let's go ahead and do our color conversion. That's the same as we did before. Enhance, adjust color, and adjust hue saturation, and then colorize. There we go, so there's our color. Now, just before I had this set at 215, so I'll just use the same number in here. There we go, there's 215. And I can adjust the saturation to we're happy with that. I think that looks pretty good in there somewhere. Choose OK, so there's the colorizing. Now the last step on this make this look real nice is to give it the kind of darkening around the outside corners, that vignetting effect. And for that, we're going to be using a filter up here. And this is the correct camera distortion filter. Now this is designed to allow you to fix problems. For instance, if you have a vignetting in here that's happening because of a camera lens shade or something, you can minimize that look with this tool right here, the vignette. You can try to lighten that up a little bit. What this does is it allows you to lighten the corners up. There we go. I'll go real less and see that. Or darken the corners down. Or any place in between. So I'm just going to bring the corners in just a little bit. On this one, I'm taking it down about 50. You also can adjust the midpoint on that. You see how it kind of moves in to the picture here and then moves out of the picture. So just find a setting that has a nice look. I'll take this up about plus 90 on this one. Again, this is just a, a visual, you know, it's whatever you feel like. It's kind of, you know, your choice where the, it's a, an artistic decision as to where these settings should be. Don't, you know, match mine exactly. They're going to vary depending upon your picture. But there we go. There we have our cyan, which we did before, our, our duotone. And we've now added in this nice little vignetting effect around the corners, giving it more of an antique look. And choose OK. And there we go. There is our nice duotone look with more control than we had last time for a real nice finished piece. And again, it took a few steps. Let me just repeat those again so you can memorize that. OK, it's make a copy of your background. Always, always make a copy of the background so I have my background original here. I can always go back to that if I mess up. So that's, that's my safety. So you make a copy of your background. The first thing you do is enhance, convert to black and white, and then choose whatever settings you want to use to get that exactly the way you want it. You then go up to adjust color, hue saturation, colorize, and then set the hue where you want that color. For the cyan, 215 works out pretty well. And then the final tool we used was the correct camera distortion, and that's right here, the vignetting control, right there. Okay, so there we go. That is how to give your wedding photograph that duotone look. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.